5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. To be able to understand this video properly, you need to quickly go over again the idea of natural selection and be able to have a good understanding of what that means. So with natural selection, basically we have some organisms or some members of a species which are better adapted to the environment than other ones and the ones which are better adapted will be able to reproduce and thereby survive and yeah their genes will be passed on to the next generation. So for example if we have these birds we've got a table which is quite brown and we've got these brownish and these greenish bugs then the green bugs will be less well adapted they're quite visible so they're quite easy to see and eventually they'll all be eaten as the birds are doing in the moment and once that happens once they're all eaten then we have more and more of these brown bugs being being around because they are less visible, which means they have more chance of surviving. And when they survive, they reproduce, so their numbers will grow. Right? That's natural selection in general. But natural selection can also be used when it comes to bacteria, especially when it comes to bacteria and the use of antibiotics. So use of antibiotics. Remember, what do antibiotics do? Well, antibiotics, they kill bacteria. That's what their function is. So they kill bacteria. Now let's say we have a original population, which is this here. This is our original population. And you can see there's different colors. And these different colors have to do with the resistance. So how resistant they are to these antibiotics. If it's white, that means it's very low resistance. If it's purple, a dark purple, it means it's very high in terms of resistance. And everything in between is in between resistance. So if we have natural selection, so if we, for example, use our antibiotics. So now we use our antibiotics to kill off the bacteria. Well, which one will be will be dead first? You're going to find all the ones which are very low resistance will die first. And then you're going to have the other ones which are less resistant still than the purple ones. And eventually, you're going to have mostly the resistant one left over. So this is the second step. So these are the ones which are left over. And now that they're left over, because they have managed to get through the waves of antibiotics, they will reproduce. And then the problem is the final population, so what we have left over, you can see now here, they're all high, have high resistance. So they have high resistance to the antibiotics. So they're resistant to antibiotics. And that's obviously a bit of a problem, because we could kill the bacteria initially, but if we try to do the same antibiotics, if we try to use our same antibiotics on this sample here, we're going to find we're going to be less effective. Most of them will actually not die because they're resistant. So natural selection can work when it comes to general animals and insects, but also when it comes to bacteria. And this has been causing us many problems because many of our bacteria become resistant to our drugs that we use against them. So the actual dot point itself says students will process information from secondary sources to discuss problems relating to antibiotic resistance. We've got to discuss some problems relating to antibiotic resistance. So first of all, what is antibiotic resistant? Well, for example, here you can see in this picture, you can see these blue things. Blue things are originally our antibiotics. So what they are meant to either kill a cell wall or prevent protein synthesis, these different ways to make sure that bacteria can't survive. Now, usually they would act, but the ones which are actually resistant, so these are the resistant ones, what they, some of them, what they can do is, for example, you know, you, know, you can see your antibiotics coming in and they're trying to do something with the cell wall. But you have a new enzyme, which was which came came about for evolution and natural selection, and this enzyme is actually good at destroying the antibiotics. So when the antibiotics come, they will get shredded. So you can see here they're being shredded. So they're being shredded, which means that they're going to be not effective because they've basically been destroyed. So some some antibiotic resistant bacteria will be able to destroy antibiotics directly. So they'll come and they'll destroy them with an enzyme. Other ones will have evolved a pump. Right, so this is a pump. Again, usually these antibiotics will accumulate in the bacteria, eventually kill it. But here they, they go in, so try to go in. They might try to you know, interfere with the protein synthesis. This might be their function. But as soon as they go in, they're going to be pumped back out again. Right, so one goes in, they get pumped back out. So again, they can't do their function because the actual bacteria has evolved a way to make sure that they can't get damaged from the bacteria itself. Uh, from the antibiotics. And a third way could be that, for example, the antibiotics come in, but then we have a new enzyme, this green enzyme here, and what it does is just 
change its shape, right? So this was shape originally, so like a triangle, and then this enzyme will change its shape, and now it might be this kind of looking triangle, and this has a function to, let's say, destroy the cell membrane, but by binding to a certain part of the cell, but this one, which has the change structure, can't destroy the cell membrane, so it can't do its function, so it can't destroy the cell membrane. Right, these are just three ways that, for example, some of the bacteria can evolve to become resistant to antibiotics. Now, what happens if we have some being resistant to antibiotics? Well, that means we can't fight infection, right? So fighting disease is harder because what we used beforehand might not work anymore after a while. They might become resistant to the drug. So fighting disease is a big problem when it comes to antibiotic resistance because the actual bacteria will be resistant to it. And what we used to kill it yesterday might not be as effective today because they've gone resistant. Right, so fighting disease is the biggest problem. So the problem that we face when it comes to antibiotic resistance, it lowers the chance of it helping to fight disease, which means we might not be able to control disease. So if we can't fight disease that well, that means we can't control disease that well. And once we stop being able to control some of the diseases we have been controlling at the moment, then we're in trouble. And for example, the flu virus. The flu virus is one example that becomes resistant quite quickly, it changes itself quite quickly and becomes resistant, which is why it's hard to have a medication that really works against the flu virus, because they'll just keep evolving and keep changing, and whatever we, whatever new medication we invent, they'll become resistant to that as well. Right? So, fine disease is a problem, controlling disease. What that means, we need to invent new medications. So, we always need to come up with new medications. That's another problem because they'll always become resistant to your old medication, but we always have to have new medication. But again, even that new medication will, in a couple of years, become redundant again. It will be useless because they've gotten resistant again. So overall, that's the main problem. So discuss the problems relating to antibiotic resistant. It means we lower the chance of us being able to fight disease, and we always have to reinvent new medication because they get, res they get resistant to your old medication. So that's the biggest problem when it comes to antibiotic resistance. Now, there's also a problem because we, as humans, often make it go, f make them become resistant faster. We increase, we increase the rate of antibiotic resistance. So we're making them become resistant faster than they would usually become because of the way we act. So for example, if someone has a virus infection, right, someone has a virus infection, they'll go to the doctor and they ask for antibiotics. So the doctor gives them, prescribes them antibiotics for a virus infection. And we mentioned last video, antibiotics do not help fight virus infections. So you're going to take this antibiotics, which doesn't help fight their infection at all, but actually makes the bacteria which are living in the body, there might only be a couple of in there which don't do anything at the moment. But because we're taking these antibiotics, that means they're becoming more and more resistant. Right? The resistance one will survive. Eventually, heart, like bacteria which were in a small number were there, but they have managed to establish themselves as antibiotic resistant because we're using drugs which aren't, actually tar which aren't targeting them, but we're getting there anyway. We're doing it because we're ta overtaking them. We're taking too many antibiotics. And by doing so, we'll make all kinds of bacteria antibiotic resistant, even if we didn't intend to. Right, so overprescription of antibiotics is one problem. Also, if someone actually has a bacterial infection, so for example, if someone has food poisoning or anything else, we often get a course. So they're telling us not just to eat one tablet or two tablets, but they might tell us to eat like lots of tablets over, let's say, two weeks or so, right? So let's say two weeks, take your tablets, and then you feel okay. Some people might feel okay a lot, a lot sooner, so they might feel well after maybe two days or three days, and they might stop taking the antibiotics. And that's a problem because we're meant to take the full, K, full, full course, so to make sure to always take the full course of antibiotics when you actually take your antibiotics. And the reason why is because if we take the full course, we make sure we kill every single one. If we take only maybe two or three days worth, that might mean we kill most of them, right? So we kill most of them. But which are the ones which survive? Well, the ones that survive will be the ones which are more antibiotic resistant because those are the ones which are the least, the most likely to survive a couple of days. So then we have a couple of ones which are antibiotic resistant and they will duplicate and then we'll have more and more. 
So when you take your medication, make sure to take the full course, not just two or three days worth. Also, we are being told more and more to use, this is a spray, so this is an antimicrobial, it's called antimicrobial spray, and they are meant to kill bacteria, right? So we spray them on our computers, we spray them all over our house. Now the problem with those sprays is they promote antibiotic resistance, because obviously we're spraying antibiotics all over the place constantly for, for no real reason, and that means we're going to give them more chance to develop antibiotic resistance. So that's, we should stop doing that as well, we should stop using antibiotic sprays, because they just make them become antibiotic resistant faster. Now also we often use antibiotics when it comes to livestock. So for example, our chickens, our um, cows, our sheep get fed antibiotics to make sure that they don't become sick or that, or that they don't become as sick because they don't have very good health conditions. So you give them these antibiotics. And what that means is that they have exposed to high levels of antibiotics, which also gives the bacteria more chance to develop antibiotic resistance. So if, for this dot point, you should know what does antibiotic resistance do. It means we have less chance to fight infection because we need to have constant new medications coming out to fight, to, to get over this antibiotic resistance that the bacteria are developing. And that's causing problems because you know, someday we might run out of ideas and then we can't fight the infection anymore at all. And the other one was the problems of increasing antibiotic resistance, so the rate of it increasing dramatically. Many of those problems are due to the fact that we over-prescribe medication. We prescribe it for the wrong infections. If someone has a virus infection, we give them antibiotics, which doesn't make any sense. People often don't take the full course when they get these antibiotics given, which means we promote the idea of the ones which survive are the ones which are antibiotic resistant. We need to make sure we try to kill all of the ones. And often people will use nowadays antibiotic sprays, which means that we kill bacteria in our living room and everything else. But the problem is, and we're just randomly giving them a chance to become antibiotic resistant. And also we use it in our livestock quite a bit to make sure that they stay a bit healthier. And by doing so, we also give them more of a chance to become antibiotic resistant, the bacteria itself. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.